Good morning, everyone. It's great to be back for another youth chat and just dive a little bit more on God's Word with all of you. I hope all of you are doing well and that you're staying healthy, keeping keeping good uh, good spirits, because this this trial will pass. This trial of patience will pass, and unfortunately, it's gone on a little bit longer than what all of us want. But hey, that's what patience is all about and I know we've been talking a lot about uh, strengthening up yourself during this time and just really growing in God God's word uh, letting letting God work through you and grow the fruit of the spirit in you and we're going to talk a little bit more again from Galatians today but before we get into that let's just start off with a word of prayer God, I want to thank you so much for who you are. I want to thank you so much, Lord, that no matter what season of life it is, whether it be the joyous season, whether it be the the more uncertain season, whether it be the season of health, the season of, of illness, that you're there with us through it all, Lord. That no matter what, what goes on in life, you are right there beside us. You'll never leave or forsake us. And God, we ask that you just continue to strengthen us, help build onto our build onto our testimony, onto our witness of you, Lord. So when all this all this gets lifted and we can go out again, that we can share your name across across the globe and just be the light and light into the world. God, continue, continue to build us, continue to guide us. Just in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, everybody. We're going to be back in Galatians. But from where we are towards the end of the book last time, we're going to be towards the beginning talking a little bit about Paul. Um, actually, a whole lot about Paul. Um, and just what he went through. So... Paul used to be uh, full on devout. Uh, what's what's the word I'm looking for? But he was the guy, or one of the guys when it came to uh, Judaism, when it came to you know the council, and so he was one of the guys that they sent out to help persecute the early church, early Christians. Which, when people you know, saw his conversion when he went from Saul to Paul, all thanks and glory be to God um, and our Lord Jesus Christ that he he showed Paul the way on the road on the road to Damascus, had to really humble Paul, had to really show him that it was it was more that there was more to the story than what what he had known at the time and that here this man that was persecuting early church Christians setting them up to either be stoned in the streets or tossed into prison would end up becoming one of the greatest missionaries of all time so so right here in Galatians, the Church of Galatia, they're having they're having a little bit of str- struggles right now. They're um, one of the things that's going on is that they're just not really knowing. They're getting confused up on a different gospel. Um, so. So what Paul's trying to get here is that it's not man's gospel, but it's God's gospel. And so we're going to really focus in here in chapter 1, around verse 10. And we're going to see a little bit more about Paul's Paul's journey, Paul's uh, willingness to let Christ do the work in him. 
to let it be really Christ's gospel and not, you know, what anyone else has influenced Paul. So starting in verse 10, for do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be a servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son to me, or his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and, flesh and blood, Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. But other of the apostles saw I none save James, the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God, I lie not. Afterwards, I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preacheth the faith which once he destroyed. And they glorified God in me. So there's really a, a big background here, but I just want you all to know that all this was not possible without Jesus. So starting off here, Paul's just asking the church in Galatia, it's like, for am I just trying to please you? Am I trying to just talk you into something? Like, am I trying to give you the old car like used car salesman pitch like hey buy this you know jesus is great sort of ordeal um you know it's only 5500 like trying to sell him like a new toyota corolla or something like that no he's paul saying here that if i'm trying to please man if i'm trying to fit the gospel to suit um and change the gospel to suit your lifestyle, to you know, make sure you're just happy, then I'm not being a servant of Christ. He he's wanting them to know that this gospel, this good news about Jesus Christ, came straight from God, came straight from Jesus. That this whole revelation came from Jesus. And that it was not twisted by man's, like man's thoughts, man's, uh, you know, all right, what are some good, good moral like things that we can just throw out there? No, it was, this came straight from Jesus. And he, he makes it clear in verse 12. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Because he had been, like Paul had been taught the whole Mosaic law and like it had been a study, like, you know, real devout Jew in Judaism, but he's letting him know right here, it came from Jesus. My teaching came from Jesus. And that's really important. It really helps give him that credibility that, that he's able in that, you know, perseverance, that faith that he can say, my teaching, like this teaching that I'm giving you, is not my teaching. 
It's Jesus' teaching. This gospel, this great news is from Jesus. So he then goes on to, you know, talk about people have heard. I used to, you know, persecute the church. I used to try and destroy the church. But this just builds more to the impact of what Jesus did to me. And you notice how here in 15, but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by my grace to reveal, this is in 16, his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Like when God called him, after, you know, he'd went to Ananias and Damascus, was was touched, the scales fell from his eyes, and he could really see clearly. And after he was baptized, that he didn't, he didn't just go his own way. He didn't, you know, think, oh, well, what about this? No, he let God minister to him. Jesus was ministering to him. All that was you know, seen by him through the spirit, you know, he was, he was able to realize that what he had been given was grace. That all his prior persecutions of the church, not that had all been taken care of because of Jesus' grace. That all that, bloodshed was now paid off like that now that Paul surrendered to Christ all his all his past sins been forgiven that you know right here he's he's saying that he went out and spent some time alone just like we may be here in our homes or whatnot you know just spending time by ourselves and he was able to take this that time where he went and he spent with nobody to really just focus on Jesus to to you know ask ask Jesus you know minister unto me grow me where do I need to be Lord to be your vessel to be your your witness unto the world. And then notice how in verse 18, then after three years, hmm, after three years, he finally went to Jerusalem after he'd been spending all this time, you know, meditating, you know, getting, getting to really learn, learn about Jesus, learn and everything he need, started to need to know. He went to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. And notice how he said, I, there are no, no other apostles. I, I didn't see any other apostles. But James, the Lord's brother, which... So he saw two. He saw Peter. And he saw James. He didn't see, didn't see any of the others. Now, that 15 days must have been a real powerful 15 days, you know, just trying to, trying to make sure that everything's, you know, well fitted. But but that 15 days was that additional, you know, equipping. I mean, Three years. Three years he spent trying to be, trying to learn, trying to be ministered unto, like being ministered unto. Not trying, but he was ministered unto because he had that willing spirit. While we're here in our, in our homes, why aren't our spirits, you know, like we have all this time. Why don't we just, 
you know, let God minister unto us? Why don't we spend time in his word? Why don't we spend more time praying, working on all our different aspects of our spiritual life, our wonderful relationship with Jesus? Like, why don't we just start with that? I've talked about, you know, the different seasons because we're uncertain when this season's going to end. So why don't we make the most of it? Fruits of the Spirit. This is adding on to the fruits of the Spirit. If you let Christ minister unto you, if you work work on your spiritual well-being right now, when, yeah, you may have some school work, and maybe you don't know what's going on throughout your day, but when you get up in the morning, or before you, before you go to bed in the evening, crack open your Bible, if you, ha- like if you don't have a Bible, if you have a smartphone, go out to your app store, download the Bible app, and just start just start reading. I strongly suggest start with one of the Gospels. The Gospel of Mark is great. Like, all of it's great. Like, I, I couldn't tell you a specific place to start, but that's any... Like, none of them is any better than the other. I mean, it's all God's word. When I started reading the Bible, I started in the book of John. And it just really ministered unto me. Um, And so the Gospel of John is one of my favorite books of the Bible, but all of them are my favorite. My Bible is my favorite. Um, So... So just take take this time. Remember that God minister unto you. Start reading his word. And as you're reading it on it, don't just read it like you would a book for your English class. Because I've been there. Not too long ago, I've been there. Where you're just like, all right, let's read it so I can answer my multiple choice questions. Or my little short answer, which I know that are going to be just probably the main headers of the chapter. But no, really just take the time to to break down what is it saying? Like right here, these verses right here, if you just take it one step at a time, like if I was just reading it, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have caught half of half of what's being said here because when I read I I'm looking for the you know where's that one little catch actiony like sort of situation like because I'm a big like fantasy novel reader so I'm looking for all right when's the fight scene when's when's a great battle battle menace Tirith or something like that you know where's Gandalf um little Lord of the Rings reference there um you know whenever you actually take the time to to just read it verse by verse and to really meditate on it is to really just think about it ask questions well what about this why why was it said this way what was you know why did paul spend three years you know, before he went to Jerusalem, like what? Wonder why. But you know, it's pretty neat that he, you know, that he's using this right here. That he's showing them that hey, it took time to, to really get this from God. That you know, not all the answers come overnight. But we're really just sit and meditate on it because we got plenty of time now. No other distractions. Spend time reading God's word, meditating on it, asking God. Asking God your questions. You know, spend time praying. Really building up that prayer life. And if you have any questions that you just you ain't getting anything from, reach out to me. My email is always on me. And... I know sometimes my last name can easily be 
misspelled. So uh, if you go out, when you go to look this up on YouTube, um, if you look on it on YouTube or if you go to if you go to the church website, then it's it's on there. It's under the contact us. You'll you'll be able to see see my email. But otherwise I'll I'll look for this to be posted and I'll get my email down in the comment section if you need to reach out to me for any questions. But really just take this time to let God minister unto you. To really just keep getting equipped. That's that's just one of the things like God, like, this is a big saying, and I take it full to heart. God doesn't call the equipped. He equips the called. So when he calls you to do something, he'll give you, give you what you need to do it. I'm a firm believer in that. So spend time in his word. Just let him, let him build you up. We're going to go to a time of prayer. So if you bow your heads. God, we come before you now. We want to thank you so much, Lord. We want to thank you, Lord, for who you are. We want to thank you for these examples that you've given us, like Paul, where it took time. And he really needed ministered unto and how he was able to, you know, get, get away for a while and then to come back and really learn or really put what he'd learned to action. God, we ask that you, you please minister unto us, equip us in this time where we're, where we're sort of sitting back so that when that, when that, red light turns to green we're going to really hit the ground running hit the ground for you Lord so we can shine your light so we can spread your good news all across all across this globe and we know that as we spend time in your word as we spend time praying to you you'll continue to cultivate us you'll continue to grow us God, I ask you again to please just keep everyone safe, keep everyone healthy, and to let us all get back together here shortly. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So thank you all, everyone. Hope you all enjoyed it. It's definitely been beneficial, and it's really been, been, been good to reach out to you all in some, in some way, shape, or form. And I... I hope that you're continuing to learn from this and prayers that we just all get to be back together soon. We got a lot of stuff planned and hopefully we can take it. We'll take it day by day right now, but we're waiting for that green light. Waiting for that green light. All right, y'all. Take care. Stay safe. Stay close to God. See y'all later.